We've got a lot of callers waiting. So okay, go, go ahead. Get on to Susan, who's been waiting patiently down in Columbia. Thank you. Hey, Susan. Um, hey, good morning. I'm loving morning. your show, of course. Um, uh, Hayward was just talking about the very thing that, that really relates to my question. And um, because I was a little bit on the phone with the person who answered, I didn't hear everything he said, but I picked up about the oven birds, which warms my heart because about once every two years, I see one oven bird in March or somewhere in my yard here in Columbia. Yep. And it is, I could wait all year just to see that one bird. And I'm so, see, I have, from that kind of observation, I have no idea how many oven birds there really are or there aren't. So that information was absolutely wonderful. And my question was going to be, as you pass, you know, through succession of the season or succession, at least maybe the same season most of the time, but as you went up from here, from, from here to Maine, so you're cataloging the oven birds. What else are you seeing of, of particular interest? The kinds of birds that people like us who love birds but don't see the kinds we want to see, um, like oven birds and particular warblers and maybe thrushes or whatever. What did you see as you went up through the mountains uh, up until Maine? Well, Can you give us a kind of a... Rundown of that. I can give you a, a rundown. One of the other interesting birds that uh, most people wouldn't uh, guess would have been a, a very common bird. I, most people would think that the red-bellied woodpecker, which we certainly have in profusion around here and is certainly right. common in the whole eastern United States, would have been probably the commonest woodpecker. But as the high parts of the Appalachian Trail, it was the mm -hmm. hairy woodpecker. There was hairy woodpeckers ah. from from Georgia to Maine. The absolute most common woodpecker ah. on the entire Appalachian Trail was a hairy woodpecker. Ah. Really, oh, uh, it was. It was. And, it, it took me hardening. quite by surprise. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And locally you, common around here. You right. Know? Yeah. Locally, but uh, you know, it's a weird bird. Hairy woodpecker is one of the strange birds. Yeah. They they occur mostly at higher elevations right. as a breeding bird in the south, but they also occur in the Bahamas. Yeah. As a resident bird, so it's like the most common bird on Abaco, for instance. So you go yeah. there, the most common woodpecker is the hairy. And I'm, I'm sure you saw a lot of other things that um, when you moved up in elevation, things that we see here in the wintertime, like the— uh, uh, Rose-breasted grosbeak uh, in right. the spring migration, which is absolutely one of my favorite yeah. birds. Uh, yeah. I got to hear time and time again the further north that, I went. Uh, was that the rose-breasted? Rose-breasted yeah. grosbeak, right, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Beautiful bird and such a wonderful song, too. And of course, we all see kinglets and juncos here in the wintertime, even in Columbia. And you go up to high elevations, like on the Roan Mountain part of, of the Correct. Appalachian Trails. Right. And there they are in the summertime, mm -hmm. doing their breeding in Fraser Fir and, and even in Hemlock Forest. So, yeah, it's cool. And right. did you see gray cheeks thrush on uh, Mount Washington? Uh, no. And I, I was in the area where it's, it's close relative, shall we say, the Big Nails thrush. Right up in, in Maine, uh, but I never, I was led around by a guy that uh, was was a volunteer on a mountaintop there, and we never did encounter the bird, but yeah. the thrushes were the other thing, that yeah. uh, you didn't see them that much, but, but you certainly heard, heard them, them all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, and in, the, in our southern Appalachian, you know, and, and um, that's a really great uh, thing to talk about, Susan, is that the oven bird, the bird that, that we started the conversation with, um, uh -huh. is, is kind of holding its own, because the forests are still... Uh -huh rather intact in the in the southern Appalachians, the middle Appalachians, the northern Appalachians, where this bird likes to make its home. Um, and its winter range, uh, which I was able to, to see it on uh, in Central America and Belize, uh, you find it in the weirdest place because it likes to be around people. It's mostly in gardens and, you know, feeding uh -huh. on the ground, not the habitat uh -huh. that it breeds in, but a different habitat. Uh -huh. But other species, uh -huh. like the, the wood thrush, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. are, is a species that is used to be the common sound of the lower middle elevations in the Appalachians and the Piedmont and even down closer to the coast. And today that sounds almost disappeared because um, uh -huh. that bird's not doing well. So some are doing great, some are holding on, and some are declining. And, and uh, Hayward, what an amazing experience to see that. Well, it really end was. To end. To one end to the other and just to be uh, that aware every day. I don't know that I would have finished the trail had I not had uh, the birds 
to keep me occupied, shall we say, yeah. uh, over all those miles. It really did make a difference. Cool. It's, it's 